And I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce the moderator for our third panel. Dr. Alan Ducketman is a Mayo Clinic trained internist and occupational physician. Currently Professor Emeritus in the West Virginia University School of Public Health and School of Medicine. His research focuses on environmental disease and disease prevention, including health communications to affected populations. He has designed community studies and published actively concerning population aspects of exposure to, to perk fluoral alkyl substances. And many of these publications are highly cited. He is a clinical consultant to industry, labor, nonprofit organizations, government, and community groups. Dr. Ducketman also has an active research program in quality assurance concerning clinician laboratory orders and interpretation. His public service has included chair of the External Science Advising Committee to the National Center for Environmental Health and the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And Dr. Ducketman, I'd like to turn things over to you. Thank you for that introduction. And it's my privilege to introduce our first speaker. And Nikki Hedick is the founder of Pretty Lane Beauty Boutique and Dollop Beauty as well. She brings the perspective of community, um, entrepreneur, and uh, worker, all related to this topic. Uh, she's been working in the beauty industry since 2000. And after launching Dollop in 2014, she sought to pioneer and modernize uh, the beauty industry. Um, she's a makeup artist and she uh, has been utilizing her vision to help the beauty community and the Cedar Rapids community uh, in the current era. She founded Pretty Lane, as I mentioned, uh, in 2019. And now it's a privilege to turn over the uh, meeting to uh, Nikki Heineck. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, I am here just representing um, a private family that has had PFAS contamination. Just a little about our story. Um, my husband and I live on an acreage near Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Cedar Rapids is the second largest city in Iowa. And our acreage um, is close in borders to the Cedar Rapids airport. And last summer, as we were building our house, um, we were contacted by a professor from the University of Iowa um, who leads environmental studies there. And he reached out to us and wanted to test our water. And we really didn't know why, but we allowed him to test it. And the professor, um, Swartney is his name, he hypothesized that given our location near the Cedar Rapids airport, the Eastern Iowa airport, that we were would possibly have PFAS contamination. And last year was the first time I had ever heard the word PFAS. Um, our water came back and tested at 133 parts per trillion. We had 21 um, total types of compounds. And of course, all of this was kind of Greek to us. We had no idea what PFAS was or what a contamination meant. Um, this initial result left us with some obvious questions like what are the health implications? What does it take to mitigate the water? And um, how have we been contaminated? So our first question was what are the health, health implications? And so we of course went to our doctor and asked if some of our health problems were related to PFAS. And of course they gave us like a blank stare and were, you know, unfortunately said they had never heard of PFAS. Um, just briefly, my husband and I suffer from infertility and we asked um, some of our infertility specialists if PFAS could be you know, impacting our infertility. And again, we were met with like, what is PFAS and we have no idea. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Um, we also reached out to our family practitioner and I asked him, you know, how do we get blood tests for PFAS? And he said that we, you know, he could look into it, but even if we had it done, they weren't really sure if there would be any conclusive, you know, like they wouldn't know what to do with the results. So maybe we shouldn't even have um, the blood test done. Um, we also wanted to understand where the contamination was coming from. So we worked with the University of Iowa who contacted the Eastern Iowa airport to start there. And of course there's a gap in study. So 
the gap is caused by who pays for studies. Does the Eastern Iowa airport um, privately pay for us to understand where the contamination is coming from? Also the city around us puts biosolids on um, cornfields. And, or is the University of Iowa responsible since they were the ones who um, found the PFAS contamination? Um, I'd also like to mention that we were, are the only ones in our area with PFAS contamination above the EPA guidelines. So we are the only ones receiving any type of help um, from the university or from the Eastern Iowa Airport in terms of getting water. So the airport has been a friendly neighbor and has helped us to get clean water by providing us with bottled water and a reverse osmosis system, but we are the only ones in our neighborhood, even though everybody else did have elevated numbers. Um, at this time, we there has been no additional testing um, outside of our property in like in a couple mile radius, and there's no, been no additional testing uh, of our aquifer, so we're not sure the extent of the contamination. Um, as of right now, I'm the only PFAS contaminated person that I know, and to be honest, outside of anything that I've Googled, I really don't know that much about it, and I guess I just wanted to share my story, and if in a perfect world, something that would have been, it would still be very helpful is some type of, of course, um, uh, maybe studies done, or information given to doctors that they... Uh, I'm sure this is much more complicated than I'm, I'm simplifying it, but I guess just overall understanding of what PFAS is. And um, my husband worked with lead poisoning. I know that was mentioned earlier. And it seems like something like that is just, you know, in, in more everyday language, like, oh, we know what lead poisoning is. Oh, we know the health effects in it. Of course, with PFAS, we're just like, there's just so many unknowns and we don't even know where to turn.